Hello! So if you're joining me now, then you guys probably already watched video one and two of this series. If you haven't, check out part one, part two right here. Okay, so in this video, what I'm going to be talking about is how the size of the bonding atoms affect how strong the bonds with hydrogen are. And how strong the bond is with hydrogen is going to determine how strong of an acid or base it is, right? So that's pretty important for you guys, so stay tuned. So if we take a look at hydrofluoric acid and hydroiodic acid over here, right, they look pretty damn similar. And if you look in the periodic table, um, iodine is in the same group, so same column as fluorine. They're all in uh, group 17, I believe. So their electronegativities are pretty similar, but because it's lower, it means that the electronegativity is lower as well. See? There's fluorine and there's iodine, and iodine's lower. So if iodine is less electronegative, right, that also means it's less greedy, and more willing to share its electrons with hydrogen and form a stronger bond, right? So you would think that this bond is stronger, but that's actually not the case. Because there's such a huge difference in um, the size of iodine versus the size of fluorine, that, that factor is just so much more important than just electronegativity alone. Take a look, and bam. See, iodine's a beast compared to fluorine. Do you see how much bigger it is in actuality compared to uh, before? See, this is the tricky part. It'll look pretty similar on paper, but you have to actually think of it in terms of like all its electron shells and how big the atoms actually are. So um, over here, right, as you can see, the bond between hydrogen and iodine is going to be so much longer compared to the bond with hydrogen and fluorine. And with a longer bond, it also means a weaker bond. And you know what that means about acids. And uh, yeah, when we take a look at fluorine here, shorter bond. And the reason why it's like this is basically iodine's lower on the periodic table. So as you go down the periodic table, you get more and more electron shells around your central nucleus. And as you go up, you have less electron shells. And fluorine is much higher than iodine on the periodic table. Hence, fluorine has less electron shells, smaller atomic radius, tighter bond versus iodine. Okay? And you can also look at it this way. Okay. Whatever you do, don't let go. All right. I'll miss you, iodine. Okay. And we're almost done. The next thing we have to worry about is the conjugate base forms, the fluoride ion and the iodide ion. But before we do that, uh, I forgot to do this before. Whoops, my bad. But HF, HI, which one's the stronger acid? It's this one, because it has a, stronger, a longer bond distance, meaning the hydrogen's hanging on for like dear life, basically. He's barely hanging on, I just flick it, he goes flying. HF, the bond is closer, stronger, I flick it, it's gonna take a harder flick to kick it off, basically. So this is the stronger acid, and this is going to be the weaker acid. But the question is, the fluoride ion versus the iodide ion, which one's gonna be a better base? Well, you have to think of it in terms of um, which one's better at grabbing a proton and holding on to it, okay? So take a second. It's gonna be fluor the fluoride ion because it, uh, the, it can form a shorter bond with the, hydro with the hydrogen okay. and um, hold on to it better as a result compared to iodine. Right. Yeah, because we grab onto a hydrogen and you get into these situations again, and then in, th in these situations, the hydrogen would fall off faster here. So yeah, this is a stronger base, and iodide is the weaker base. Okay, sorry about the bad handwriting. In the event that iodine picks up a hydrogen, it would just lose the hydrogen right away and go back to the iodide ion. In the event that the fluorine picks up hydrogen, it might be able to hold on to it for a little bit longer. So we say it's a stronger base. Um, yeah, so that's basically it for how the size of the bonding atoms affect how strong uh, acid or base is. If, uh, stay tuned for the last factor that determines uh, how strong the bond actually is with hydrogen, and that's the factor regarding how concentrated the electrons actually are in that bond, okay? That's also known as delocalization or resonance, which I'm sure you guys hate. 
but resonance is basically the answer to everything in organic chemistry, unfortunately. So stay tuned. Almost done. Come on in. Oh, thank you for it. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Okay. So special thanks to Luisa Ocampo, professional uh, halogen, and then professional slicer. <laughs> And I forgot, if you like what you saw, make sure you send me some thumbs down there. Don't leave because we only have one part left, okay?